And the order that uh, Isaac pulled out of the basket was Kevin Burns, David McInnes, and Ryan Barber. So, Kevin, how will you address issues, concerns, and problems with law enforcement contracts? And for those of you, I know the sheriff's candidates understand this, but for those who may not understand, let me fully explain that question. The sheriff's department has contracts with eight of the 15 cities in our county. And in other words, they don't have their own police departments, and so they contract with the sheriff. But there are also other contracts with private enterprise to do studies and that sort of thing, and other kinds of contracts with other law enforcement agencies. So the question is, again, how will you address issues, concerns, and problems with law enforcement contracts? Kevin. issues with the with the, the cities it's always been a problem trying to manage those contracts and get the proper funds to uh, to service those so I am uh, I'm in favor of, of giving a nice solid look at a service district uh, type of, of, re of resolution much like they do down in Salt Lake with unified the unified police department I've talked to uh, some city managers and some mayors and some councils and they're interested in uh, at least looking at it and seeing if that's the answer to solving that problem so we don't have the same conversation every year of, of trying to balance those contract prices and, and manage those uh, and provide the opportunity for the cities to, uh, to kind of direct their own law enforcement. With that would come a board that would be formed of, uh, from those cities. Uh, most likely the mayor or their, their appointee would, would, is what would form that board. Um, to create that uh, that police district, and, and it would be available to to start with uh, the contract cities that the, the the sheriff's office provides service for. Thank you, David. Thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, contract cities, as uh, Kevin mentioned, it's something. This works on so many different levels, and. This affects the service that they get because this is frequently, many times, the deputies talk about it all the time because there's always an uncertainty. Where are we at the contracts? What are we doing? Those type of things. So um, as it affects, it's just not city leaders and administrators at the sheriff's office. This bleeds down to uh, uh, the deputy level, the line level. So what, what ends up having to happen, first and foremost, we need to get a relationship with these cities. Many times we're sending people to represent the sheriff's office that are deputies, corporals, and sergeants. That is not who should be representing the sheriff's office as a, to those cities. It should be administrators, sheriffs, chiefs, those types of things. Number one, you have to be the face of the agency. Secondly, is you have to work in the middle. And when you build relationships and you start talking about trust, there is give and take. A lot of times these city managers and these city's mayors, they are elected by you people and they want to be able to get the best bang for their buck. The problem is, is that a lot of times that doesn't match up with what the service is being provided. So there has to be some give and take and just like in life, give and take is successful when you establish relationships. We're talking about people, we're not talking about numbers. That's the biggest thing that needs to be taken a look at, is redefine relationships with our contract cities. Thank you. Go ahead, right. Ryan. Thank you uh, also for being for coming out tonight. Uh, before I got into the race, I had several people reach out to me and ask me how I would handle uh, contract cities. And if you think about it, the sheriff's office original design is to be supportive with whatever you can provide. And I've learned that all the cities that have asked me about what I would do if I was sheriff to do for them, my answer has always been this, whatever you want. If you want to do a district, if you want to do your own uh, police agency, whatever you want to do, that's what you should have. 
They know their city better than we do. The, the vital thing about having your Supreme uh, Sheriff's Office and supporting these agencies is key. A lot of these contracts as cities are frustrated right now because of what has been said here prior. There's a lot of uncertainty. We have a real problem inside law enforcement in this state. It's high turnover rate. People don't want to be officers anymore. So a lot of the service is being cut. And, and partly because the legislature in our state cut the retirement for officers. It's a huge challenge. So it's not just the sheriff's office, but it's also the attraction of getting law enforcement into being officers. It's really tough. But so there's ways you gotta be creative, like I did in my small city that I'm at. We had a problem as well, so we supplemented. We created things called citizen patrol. We have a safe trade zone. These are things that don't take away from officers, but they supplement. These are creative, legitimate, real ways to help the citizens get what they want. Thank you, Brian. We will now reverse the order. So Brian We've, we've heard rumors, we've read stories, and we've read concerns about what's going on in the Sheriff's Department. And uh, there's a lot of finger pointing and probably buck passing, and a lot of it is rumor. In any case, there's a perception that things need to be done to um, rebuild morale in the Sheriff's Office. Ryan, how do you handle morale problems with employees? So it's a good question. This is uh, the, the same issue that I had going up to Perry City. We had a lot of these problems. We, in fact, we had stuff missing in our evidence room too. We had low pay. We had a terrible fleet. And so a plan had to be delivered. It was a plan that everybody needed to be involved in. And when you have a morale issue, if you have officers leaving for a buck or two or you know, three bucks an hour, it's a morale issue. If it's five or ten dollars an hour, it's a pay issue. So the plan that, I, that was presented when I went up there is you've got to invest every single thing you can into that officer and their family because they are the most important asset in any organization. And you've got to give that officer autonomy of freedom and you've got to give them purpose. And once you give them that, you've got to raise that expectation to perform better. Let them know why they're coming to work and how important the role is. As a leader, you have a lot of red tape you got to cut through. If you go down a mountain road and there's rocks everywhere that, that you have to drive through and weave through, a good leader takes all that red tape and clears it out of the way the best he can. So uh, Steve Waldrop said something earlier about certainty. When business comes to a town, they need certainty. Certainty's got to come back to the sheriff's office. Accountability, accountability and attitude has got to be restored. Thank you, David. So if we're going to address morale issues, uh, again, this kind of piggybacks on what I had said previously. It starts at the top. It's, if we're talking about the face of the organization, you have to walk the walk. You can't be behind the scenes. You can't lead from the middle. You can't lead from behind. So we talk about the intangibles of leadership, all right? We talk about passion for people. That's what it's got to be about. If you want to raise morale, you've got to be willing to get in it yourself. It can't be just about telling people what to do. I always look at the three musketeers. One for all, all for one. We're in this together. And it has to be demonstrated by your actions, not by your words. There has to be pride. There has to be pride. You need the passion and you need the pride in who you are and what you represent. That that organization means something to you. Why it means something to you is because of the trust that you develop and those relationships you have. Ryan talked about family. When you're on a 12-hour shift, you spend as much time with these deputies and these crews as you do with your work family. This does, in fact, become your work family. You need to have pride in that. You have to have commitment to the process. You've got to be willing to grind. You've got to be willing to follow it through. That's what, when you're a good leader, you demonstrate that you're out front. You're grinding. You're showing them, I'm in this. And the last and most important thing is you do have to be results oriented. You cannot, we do not live in an effort-based society. I'm sorry. You don't get a participation ribbon for driving a truck around for 12 hours. You've got to be results oriented. That's what I've been. That's what I'll bring to the sheriff's office.
Thank you. Well said, I like that. <laughs> that was nice. Um, leadership does have to come from the, from the top. And it, it involves a leader that uh, is engaged in the, in the organization. And engagement requires presence. Um, it's important that the leader of that organization is actually present at that organization and able to participate. And the, then it requires a leadership team that uh, is, is energetic and motivated and interested in being effective at, a, at the sheriff's office and participating with everyone at the sheriff's office that needs to participate with the sheriff's office. So the sheriff's office is, they, they are engaged with organizations throughout the community. And it's important for the leadership to encourage officers and, and, and staff to also participate in the community. It's not just it's not just to go to work. Law enforcement and public safety is a 24-7 prospect. And it, involved, it, it requires leaders, and, and every deputy that works at the sheriff's office is a leader in their community. And it's important that they're stepping out in front and participating in that community to show that, that that leadership is coming from the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office has suffered from ineffective leadership for a number of years, and it is time to change that. I plan to do that with a very, uh, a very energized leadership team. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have uh, completed the discussion among the sheriff's candidates. Let's give them a hand. Kevin Burns for Weber County Sheriff. I have served the citizens of Weber County for almost three decades. Weber County residents have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to develop me as a law enforcement officer and as a law enforcement leader. It's, it's time for me to make sure that I'm paying back that investment and I take my leadership qualities into the Sheriff's Office to, to change the direction of the Sheriff's Office. I want to improve the lives of the deputies and employees that work there so that they will protect you to the very best of their ability and be happy doing it. Thank you. Dave McInnes from Weber Weber County Sheriff. There's a lot I want to say. Uh, I'm running because I believe I'm what we need. I bring passion, I bring commitment, I bring accountability, I bring discipline. That's what we need. We don't have a direction. We're a ship without a rudder right now. We need to regain our moral compass. I have a vision. I have people in mind that can help me accomplish that vision. Remember, the most important people in your life are the people that you choose to surround yourself with. Those are the decisions that are going to make the difference in this office. One thing James Ebert says that we're missing, we're missing value. We have, we, the, our deputies, we feel like we are not valued. We feel like we are burning the candle at both ends. And you just had a commissioner, and I'm sorry, James, say that the employees of the county have taken it in the shorts for five years. I will fight for those deputies. I will make sure I will return value. I will surround myself with the right people, and I will not give up, because that's not what I'm about. Thank you again for coming. That plan that I spoke of earlier works. It's been tested, it's been proved. As a leader, a leader has a responsibility. I've used this analogy. You strap a ladder on your back and you want to help people climb up to the top. You take what's good and you make it better. You find people and you find what's best in them and you let it shine. Employees are the most valuable asset in any organization. And it's true that there, there is no rudder for the ship right now. It's, it's dangerously off course and it needs to be put back on course. I'm going to invest everything I can into the employees. And if I invest into them, it's going to come back to you. This is a plan that works. Public trust needs to be restored to the sheriff's office. Once that's restored, we will preserve it. Please vote Ryan Arvin, Weber County Sheriff.